Peace family, peace meaning positive energy always creates elevation. So with that being said, I want you guys to watch this video by the name of Getting to Know Him. She's a TikTok slash, a TikTok slash YouTube, uh, YouTuber guys. And what she does is she exposes the enemy and the tactics that they use to keep us in the stagnant motion guys. So I want to say a uh, big kudos to her man. And if you here watching me and you subscribe to my page, I want you to also go to her YouTube and her TikTok as well and show her some love by subscribing to her as well. But part of what we do over here at I Am Awaken is we show you guys the power of positive energy. So we need to be able to take the negative uh, vibrations that they're trying to use against us to keep us in that stagnant motion and to be able to turn it into a positive motion by thinking about by thinking outside of that box, y'all, and being able to uh, be aware of the tactic that they use to be able to use those things to also manifest good things in our lives as well. You understand what I'm saying? So what we're going to do is we're going to first allow her to do what she does, and then we're going to come back and break down some of these things so I can show you guys how we can use these things in a positive light in a way that we can, you know, make these things work for us. So let's jump right into this, man. Witchcraft and profanity. With this teaching, we are going to link profanity and witchcraft together. I'm going to begin to reveal to you the secrets that these witchcraft workers do not want you to know. Let's do a little biblical research, right? Let's look at Psalms 33 and 9. It said, For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We all know that this world was literally created by God, by the words that spoke out of his mouth. That is why death and life is in the power of our tongues. This is why we have to be mindful of what we say. Let's look up the definition of an incantation. Interesting. Incantations, a series of words said as magic spell or charm. If I was smart, right? If I wanted to invoke curses on you, if I was a witch, what would I do? I would create a spell and I would use words over and over and over again to cause hurt, harm, danger, and accidents to an individual. Because we just read what an incantation is and this is what witches use, right? They do incantations. Now, just suppose someone calls you the B-I-T-C-H word. Let's look up what that word actually means. Hmm, a female dog, wolf, fox, or otter. This is the book that I'm reading from, Witchcraft and the Connection to Profanity. So when someone uses that word towards you um, and a spirit is evoked of hoarding, that spirit of whoredom is a demon spirit that causes a person to have unclean, uncontrollable sensations of lust and lasciviousness. This spirit draws an individual to want to have sex and have a lot of sexual desires from multiple sexual desires. When people are arguing with you and they're upset with you, they begin to use curse words. They begin to speak to you in a negative tone, right? Their voices change. The things that they say change, right? When, when people cut you off in traffic, they're saying F you, F this, F this, right? You have to realize um, that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So every single person that you've had an altercation with, they have literally levied spirits over you. When someone calls you gay, they are literally invoking a spirit of homosexuality over you. So Isaiah 54 and 17 needs to be a daily routine. You need to literally ask the Father to every word curse that has been spoken over you, that it fall to the ground, that it never takes shape or form. You need to employ your angels according to Psalms 91, 11, and 12. You need to command every demon that their tongues will cleave to the roof of their mouth and send confusion to every spirit that was invoked over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, y'all, let me tell y'all something. I really like her, man. I really do like this lady, man, because she's doing a good job at what she does, man. But I also want her to also shed light on the positive thing because... There is a duality to everything, y'all. Understand that. It's a double nature to everything. It's a double-edged sword to everything out here that's being done. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this thing over, man. And I'm going to go ahead and break her down as she goes so I can show you guys how you can take some of the information that she's giving you and also use it to speak that same life or death into a situation that either has no good for you or is no good for you in your life or the things that you want to be more abundantly in your life. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go. 
witchcraft, and profanity. We are going to link profanity and witchcraft together. I'm going to begin to reveal to you the secrets that these witchcraft workers do not want you to know. Let's do a little biblical research, right? Let's look at Psalms 33 and 9. It said, For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We all know that this world was literally created by God, by the words that spoke out of his mouth. That is why death and life is in the power of our tongues. This is why we have to be mindful of what we say. Let's look up the definition of it. Okay, y'all. So first and foremost, man, what I do want you guys to understand is, is that the Bible says that you was made in God's likeness and in his image. So when it says this, it's telling you that you were made, when he says you were made in his likeness and his image, He's telling you that you were made not in the physical presence of yourself, but in the spiritual presence. Because you are a dual nature, God not only made you from the clay of the earth, but he did breathe the spirit of life into you. You understand what I'm saying? So when Jesus was going through the Bible and he was saying, you could do the things I've done and more if only you had the faith of a mustard seed. You understand what I'm saying? You could split the ocean. You could walk on water, so on and so forth. Why is he saying that? Because the Bible also says that stronger is he that is in me. You understand what I'm saying? So what the Bible is saying in that in that in that moment is saying that stronger is God because God is in you. You understand what I'm saying? See, one thing you have to understand is is everything is energy. So we're energy. We're a spirit first. We're a soul first. You understand what I'm saying? And so the only difference between us and the energy of a life switch is that we are a conscious energy. We are a godly energy. You understand? So now when she says that, you know, uh, Life is in a uh, life and death is spoken with the tongue. She's not lying. So what I want her to be able to say, or well, what I want you to understand is, is that the same way that they speak life and death into your situation is the same thing you can do. Speak life and death into everything around you. Speak life and death into your children. You understand what I'm saying? Use that for a positive note because it's the law. It's the law of the world. When you speak, not only do you when you first think things. You, it, it's already yours, but when you speak it, you send those vibrations out to the world and you let the universe know exactly what it is that you want. So when you say it and then you, you, you speak it and you speak it in a certain manner and you work toward it with all positivity, then you bring in light to that situation. Understand what I'm saying? Because you're emitting motion. You're putting emotion into it, which is nothing but motion and I mean, energy and motion, guys. So, yeah, I want you guys to understand that it is life. I mean, it's, the power of life is in a tongue. Life and death is in a tongue. And you need to be able to speak that. If you want something in life, speak it into existence. You understand what I'm saying? You claim it, you own it, and you speak it. And then you work toward it. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't want y'all to look at that from a negative standpoint. I want y'all to take the positiveness from it and be able to not only, you know, keep in account what she's saying so that you can be aware of when the enemy is using this tactic, but also understand that the same power that they have, you have as well. You have that power to either ban and rebuke them or... Speak life into your situation and manifest your reality. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and, 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 and see what you got to say. Interesting. Incantations, a series of words said as magic spell or charm. If I was smart, right? If I wanted to invoke curses on you, if I was a witch, what would I do? I would create a spell and I would use words over and over and over again to cause hurt, harm, danger, and accidents to an individual. Because we just read what an incantation is and this is what witches use, right? They do incantations. Okay, so as far as the incantation go, I want you guys to understand that it's going to take more than a witch to speak things. Also, what they do is the same thing that you're able to do. You're able to use the elements around you. You understand? So they're going to do more than just chanting. But one thing you need to understand is, is that unconsciously you've been taught this in the programming that you were given when you were in school. And it starts from kindergarten. You understand what I'm saying? So what I mean by that is, is that when they tell you to spell, they're actually telling you that you're casting a spell every time you say a word. You're casting a spell. You understand what I'm saying? Every time you write something, which is why when you do a spelling B, what is it saying? Spell. You understand what I'm saying? It's a spell that's being cast. When you write things, you're actually writing a spell. This is what the Eng English uh, language is made up of. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, these are the things that we were taught unconsciously, and these are the things that we don't make ourselves aware of because we're so accustomed to the programming that was programmed in us. 
from the time that we were born. You see what I'm saying? So understand, this is why you need to be conscious of the things you say. You understand? And this is why when you, when you, when you, it's, like, it's a curse word. Just like a curse word. When you use profanity towards someone, you understand what I'm saying? You are actually cursing them. Hence, the word curse word. Because you're cursing a person. This is why I, I try my hardest not to tell a person that I hate them. Because, or call them certain things or say certain things because I know and I'm conscious of the fact that when I speak these words, I'm actually hexing their lives or cursing them. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go ahead. Just suppose someone calls you the B-I-T-C-H word. Let's look up what that word actually means. Hmm. A female dog, wolf, fox, or otter. This is the book that I'm reading from, Witchcraft and the Connection to Profanity. So when someone uses that word towards you um, and a spirit is evoked of whoredom, that spirit of whoredom is a demon spirit that causes a person to have unclean, uncontrollable sensations of lust and lasciviousness. Okay, and why is this, guys? Because we have what is known as seven energy chakras that flow throughout our body. Now, we have the root chakra, which is the divine feminine energy that kept, connects us to nature and it is in charge of our, uh, most of us are more so in our uh, root chakra because it's, it's in charge of our survival tactics. You understand what I'm saying? So, also we have the sacral chakra, we have the solar plexus chakra, we have the heart chakra, we have the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, and the crown chakra. So what happens is, is that the purpose of meditating and things like that is, is to align these energies up, to balance them out, and to get to have your kundalini energy rise up, which will then connect to the masculine, the divine masculine energy, and then you will become one with the universe. You understand what I'm saying? So when people curse you and they say these words into a certain a certain way, it comes out at a certain frequency, which unbalances, which tends to unbalance the energy within you and allows demons to then be attached to that energy, to your godly energy. You understand what I'm saying? So it's important. These, this, this is another reason why it's important for you to understand the words that's coming out of your mouth and to have, uh, you know, be courteous or to have, you know, respect when you when you're speaking with someone, especially if you love them. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go. This spirit draws an individual to want to have sex and have a lot of sexual desires for multiple sexual desires. When people are arguing with you and they're upset with you, they begin to use curse words. They begin to speak to you in a negative tone, right? Their voices change. The things that they say change, right? When, when people cut you off in traffic, they're saying F you, F this, F this, right? You have to realize um, that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So every single person that you've had an altercation with, they have literally levied spirits over you. When someone calls you gay, they are literally invoking a spirit of homosexuality over you. So Isaiah 54 and 17 needs to be a daily routine. You need to literally ask the Father to every word curse that has been spoken over you, that it fall to the ground, that it never takes shape or form. You need to employ your angels according to Psalms 91, 11, and 12. You need to command every demon that their tongues will cleave to the roof of their mouth and send confusion to every spirit that was invoked over you in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, y'all. So I'm just going to let y'all know, man, when I read the Bible, man, I do tend to read it from another, another standpoint, because one thing we have to understand is, is that, you know, uh, the preachers, they actually go to school, right? Or the ministers, they go to school and they get taught the programming that the system wants them to know. And then in turn, then they go into the churches and then they're, they, they give that same programming to their, to the, to the church. You understand what I'm saying? And so, you know, most when, coming up in church, man, I was always taught not to ask questions, man, but along, along the way, I started to understand that we need to ask questions in order to learn. You see what I'm saying? And so I want you guys to start looking within yourself and start to, you know, be able to understand more from your understanding so that you can get what the Bible is really saying because it's saying things that's more deeper than what you think it's saying. You understand what I'm saying? And so uh, I need you guys to understand that, you know, this is a this is a spiritual world, man, and this forces this that's intervening 
in that spiritual realm that's intervening with our reality and they're trying to stop us from evolving into a place where we need to grow. You understand what I'm saying? So I want you guys to understand, I, you know, that in terms of speaking things into your life, be cautious. In terms of speaking things to your children, be cautious. Uh, you know, I try my hardest. I try to, my hardest not to call my kids certain things, not to say things to them so that they, you know, won't manifest that in their reality because those vibrations that we send out is going to have a negative effect on their spirit, on their on their chakra energy. And then they might even start to believe that and then they might manifest that in their reality. So until next time, man, peace to the peace, peace, God, peace, meaning positive energy always creates elevation, man. And stay aware, y'all, because to be aware is to be alive, man. Peace.